In this lesson, we're going to focus on the rational zero theorem. This theorem helps us to list all of the possible rational zeros of a polynomial function. So it's very useful when solving polynomial equations. So here's an example. Let's say that f of x is equal to 1x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. And let's list all of the possible rational zeros. So we need to divide p by q. And p is associated with the constant term. q is associated with the leading coefficient. So factors of p, or factors of negative 6, include plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. Now factors of the leading coefficient 1 is just plus or minus 1. And any number divided by 1 is itself. So therefore, the possible rational zeros are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So if we set this function equal to 0, then the solutions to that equation will be sum of these numbers listed here. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. Let's calculate the value of x in this problem. Now notice that the degree of the polynomial is 3. So that tells us that there's three values of x. These values could be real numbers or imaginary numbers. But let's get those values. Now, the purpose of the rational zero theorem is for us to guess the first zero and then use that to get the others using synthetic division. So we know the possible zeros, 1, 2, 3, and 6, plus or minus. So let's start with 1. Let's see if f of 1 is equal to 0. So that's going to be 1 raised to the third power, plus 2 times 1 squared, minus 5 times 1, minus 6. 1 to the third power is 1. And 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5. And 1 plus 2 is 3. 5 minus 6 is negative 11, and 3 minus 11 is negative 8. So notice that f of 1 is not equal to 0. Therefore, 1 is not a 0 of a function, of this particular function. Now let's see if 2 is one of the zeros of this function. So this is going to be 2 to the third power plus 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2, minus 6. 2 to the third power, that's 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8, 5 times 2 is 10. 8 plus 8 is 16, negative 10 minus 6 is negative 16, and 16 minus 16 is 0. So f of 2 is equal to 0. That means that x is equal to 2. So this is one of the three zeros. Now, let's use this zero to get the other zeros. And this is when synthetic division will come into play. So the coefficients of the polynomial are 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. So let's bring down to 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then we need to add 2 plus 2 is 4. And then 2 times 4 is 8. And then negative 5 plus 8 is 3 and 2 times 3 is 6, and negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So make sure this is a 0. If not, something is wrong. Now, notice that we had x cubed. So this is going to be associated with x squared. So it's 1x squared plus 4x plus 3. And that's equal to 0. Now, we need to factor this expression. So what two numbers multiply to the constant term 3 and add up to the middle coefficient 4. This is going to be 3 and 1. So to factor it, it's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now, if we set each factor equal to 0, x plus 3 is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0, the two other answers will be negative 3 and negative 1. And so that's how you can use the rational zero theorem to solve a polynomial equation. So first, you need to list all the possible zeros, and then out of that, check to see which one 
will give you a function value of 0. So once you get the first 0, then you could use synthetic division to get the other zeros. Let's try another example. So let's find all the zeros of this function. Let's say f of x is equal to x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. So feel free to pause the video and try it. So let's list the possible zeros. Factors of the constant term p or factors of 20 are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. And then for the lean coefficient, factors of 1 are just 1. So let's start with 1. Let's see if f of 1 is equal to 0. So it's going to be 1 to the third power plus 8 times 1 squared plus 11 times 1 minus 20. So 1 to the third power is 1. 1 squared is 1 times 8, and then this is going to be 11. 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 plus 11 is 20, and 20 minus 20 is 0. So 1 is a 0. Therefore, we could say that x is equal to 1. So that's the first answer that we have. Now let's use synthetic division. So the coefficients are 1, 8, 11, and negative 20. So 1 times 1 is 1, 8 plus 1 is 9, 1 times 9 is 9, 11 plus 9 is 20, 1 times 20 is 20, negative 20 plus 20 is 0. So then this is going to be 1x squared plus 9x plus 20. Now let's factor it. What are two numbers that multiply to 20 but add to the middle coefficient 9? So this is going to be 4 and 5. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 plus 5 is 9. So to factor it, it's going to be x plus 4 times x plus 5. And let's set that equal to 0. So therefore, x will be equal to negative 4 and negative 5. So now we have three zeros of the polynomial function. 1, negative 5, and negative 4. Let's work on one more example. So let's say that f of x is x cubed minus 11x plus 6. List the possible zeros and find all zeros of the function f of x. So factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. And factors of the leading coefficient are just 1. So let's start with f of 1. So it's going to be 1 to the third minus 11 times 1 plus 6. So 1 minus 11 is negative 10. A negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. So that is not 0. Therefore, 1 is not a 0 of the function. So let's try 2. So it's going to be 2 to the third minus 11 times 2 plus 6. 2 to the third is 8. 11 times 2 is 22. And 8 minus 22, that's negative 16. Negative 16 plus 6 is negative 10. And so that's not equal to 0. And that doesn't work either. Actually, my math is wrong. 8 minus 22 is negative 14, not 16. So let me just correct that. And negative 14 plus 6 that's negative 8. So, and that's still not equal to 0, so x does not equal 2. Let's try 3. So this is going to be 3 to the third minus 11 times 3 plus 6. 3 to the third is 27. 11 times 3 is 33. Now, 27 minus 33 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. So therefore, we found the first 0, and that is x is equal to 3. So let's put a 3, and then this is going to be 1. Now don't forget about the 0x squared, which is between x cubed and x. So we've got to put a 0 here, and then negative 11 and 6. 
So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So this is going to be x squared plus 3x minus 2. Now, we can't factor this expression. We can't find two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to 3. So therefore, we need to use the quadratic equation. So this is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can see that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to negative 2. So here's the quadratic formula. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2. I mean divided by 2a. So it's going to be negative b, which is negative 3, plus or minus a b squared, which is 3 squared, so that's 9, minus 4 times a, a is 1, and c is negative 2, divided by 2a, which is 2. So negative 4 times negative 2, that's plus 8. And 9 plus 8 is 17. So this is going to be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. So the first answer is going to be negative 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2. And the other answer is going to be negative 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2. So these are the two other answers. And these are real numbers just with a square root involved. So we have x is equal to 3 and negative 3 plus or minus square root 17 over 2. But we still have three answers in total.